Hi everyone, in this video we are going to take a look at how to pause a game in Godot, at the difference between process modes, and finally we'll take a look at pausing shaders. Let's get started! I have prepared a project in which I have four columns of bubbles. As you can see, here are four columns of emitted particles, and additionally I have this little main menu here. And we want to be able to simulate pausing the game whenever we open this menu. But now, before we move forward to pausing the game, we first need to talk about process modes. Now, each node in Godot has its own process mode. So, for example, if we were to go, let's say, to Bubbles White, we could click under the node properties at Process. Now, you can see here at Process that we have a mode and we can select from this drop down here. But what is this process mode going to do before we dive in into these elements in the drop down? Well, the process mode basically tells the node when to stop the process, the physics process, the input, and the input event functions. The first process mode on the list is pausable. Now, this one is pretty straightforward as it basically just means that. The node is going to work as intended, with the exception of when the game is paused. When the game is paused, the node is simply going to do nothing. Now, the opposite of this is when paused. When paused is a process mode which enables the node only when the game is paused. And when the game is not paused, the node is not going to be enabled. Another process mode is always. This basically means that our node is going to always be processing, always receive input, always be active. No matter if our game is paused or unpaused, the node that has the process mode to always will always do something. The opposite of this is disabled. And this process mode simply is going to stop the process of the disabled node. So even if the game is unpaused, the node is not going to react to input or to run its physics process or its process functions. Finally, the last process mode is inherit, which basically copies the process mode of the parent. For example, if the parent is set to always, then this current node is going to be set to always as well. If it's set to default, the current node is going to be set to default, and so on. Okay, now that we know what process modes are, and we know how they react to the game being paused, then we simply need to know how to actually pause the game. For that, I'm going to create a new script and get some input from the player. And when we get the input from the player, we want to show this panel container and we want to pause the game. Now, I'm gonna get a reference to my panel container, so I'm gonna click while holding control and drag the panel container to my script. And now that I have a reference, maybe I don't want to see it at the beginning of the game. So I'm going to simply hide it by calling panel container dot hide. This hide function basically just sets the visibility of the container to false. Now we want to pause the game when we press on a key. So I'm going to go to project, project settings, and let's just create some input mapping for that. Let's add a new action. Let's call it pause. And we want to pause maybe when we press escape, why not? I'm going to click OK and I'm going to close this. So now let's handle this input. I'm going to say func input and event. And if this input has been paused, so if event dot is action pressed pause, then we want to swap the pause state. We want to pause the game or to unpause the game. So let's just make a function, let's call it swap pause state. And how do we define this function? Well, func swap pause state is going to do a few things. In our case, we want to take a look at the panel container. And if it's hidden, it means that the game is not paused. So we want to pause it. And if it's not hidden, then we want to unpause it. So let's just say if not panel container dot visible. So if our panel container is not visible, we want to show the panel container. So panel container dot show. And we want to pause the game. How do we do that? Well, we simply pause the whole tree. So we are going to say get tree. 
dot post equals true and that's it if now we are in the other case for example otherwise if the panel container is visible then we want to unpause the game so we are gonna say get three dot paused equals false and now that it's false we can also hide our container so let's just say panel container dot hide okay so now if i press f5 if i press escape you see that i am pausing the game and everything else is paused if i press escape again there is a problem i am not able to unpause the game and why is that now what did we say that pausing the game does pausing the game basically stops the process physics process the inputs and the input events so we cannot get the input back because our current node is paused <laughs> so how do we uh, solve that issue well let's close this let's go to our main and let's see what kind of process it has well let's just set this process to our main to always we want always to be able to interact with main so if we try again let's save if i press f5 again you'll see that i am able to pause the game and to unpause the game and you might see now that the bubbles keep moving even if i pause the game and before they were not moving so what is happening well these bubbles had the inherit mode so because my main parent is now set to always these bubbles are going to inherit always from the main parent so let's change that let's try to see each process mode in action so let's just say that uh, bubbles.white is going to be possible let's say bubbles.pink is going to be when paused bubbles.green is going to be always and bubbles.orange is going to be disabled now if i were to run the game again we would see that only the white and the green bubbles are doing something and why is that well if we look at the white bubbles we see that they are possible which again means that they only work when the game is not paused now on the other hand the pink bubbles only work when paused so we would expect that if we pause the game so i'm gonna press escape we will see some pink bubbles rising <laughs> this is pretty fun okay now green as you can see never stops because it is set to always and orange never starts because it has been set to disable so you can see that there are a bunch of possibilities when pausing a game now before we continue these videos are free and will forever stay free if you want to support me please consider liking and subscribing to the channel now one other thing that i added and i'm not sure if you noticed it is a shader which wiggles our bubbles a little so maybe if i pause it you will see it more clearly you can see that these bubbles here even if they are paused they still move from left to right now maybe when we pause the game we want everything to stop moving we don't want to see shaders or anything at all now there are a few ways of achieving that first of all we could try using engine dot time scale engine dot time scale basically sets how fast the time is going to go compared to the current time so if the time scale were to be one then it would go just as fast as real life time if it were two, then it goes twice as fast. And if it's zero, it doesn't do anything. So if I set the time scale to be equal to zero, and if I go here and uh, when we unpause, we set the time scale to be equal back to one. So engine dot time scale equals one, you would see that if I stop the program right now, the bubbles no longer wiggle but you can see that we have a little problem here because the other bubbles which were previously set to always have stopped moving and why did they stop moving it was set to always now they are always active but since time is not moving we cannot see the activity 
And now, of course, if I unpause the game again, I can see stuff working. But you can see how this is pretty limited. Now, there is another way of achieving this without disrupting the flow of the other nodes. And how are we going to do that? Well, we can create a script which enables or disables a variable inside our shaders. So, for example, let's say that we want to make a new script and let's call this shader controller. I created a shader controller script and what do we want to do? Well, we want to simply emit a signal when we want to pause the game and emit a signal when we unpause the game. So let's just make a variable, let's call it var shader paused and let's make it to false. And additionally, let's uh, make a signal which uses this variable to send this information further. So let's just say shader pause changed and let's call it with shader pause. Okay, and now we want to send signals that our shaders have either been paused or unpaused. So let's just make two different functions. Let's just say func paused shaders. And this is simply going to say shader paused equals to true. And it's going to emit the signal. So it's gonna say emit signal and it's gonna emit this one. And additionally, it's going to send as a parameter this shader paused. And we want to also be able to unpause the shaders. So let's just uh, make another function called unpaused shaders. And here we want to make the shaders, the shader paused variable, sorry, to false. And we call the same signal, we, sorry, we emit the same signal with shader paused. Good, now that we have emitted these signals, we can use them in order to either activate or deactivate a shader. Okay, now we need to understand what stopping a shader means. So let's just check the bubbles shader. We have here a shader material and it uses some shader. Now you don't have to worry too much about it. As you can see, the shader is pretty complex, but uh, what is happening here is that we are calculating time. So time is going to be equal to some wiggle frequency multiplied by the actual time. Now, if we make this variable equal zero in case we do not want to animate the shaders, then it's like the shaders are being paused. Okay, now let's make a variable. Let's call it I don't know, uh, shader pause or something like that. Let's call it uniform bool shader paused. And let's make it equal to false. And be careful to add this uh, semicolon. And finally, we can go down. And here, instead of setting time to be equal to time multiplied by wiggle frequency, we are just going to say time equals zero. And afterwards, we are going to say if shader paused, then we do something and otherwise we do something else. So if our shader is paused, we want our time to stay zero. So if our shader is not paused, then we want our time to equal to time multiplied by wiggle frequency. Uh, I see here I have an invalid assignment from int to float, but if I make it 0, 0.0, it's going to look good. So if the shader is not paused, we animate it. If it's paused, we don't animate it. But now, how do we update this shader paused value from within our scripts? Let's attach, for example, a script to our bubbles white. Why not? And in this script, we want to send this information that the shader has been paused to the material. And where do we get that information from? Well, from the shader controller that we previously created. Now, what we want is to have a reference to our material and we want to be able to communicate with the shader controller. So how do we do that? Well, in order to get the reference to our shader material, let's just make a variable. Let's call it var shader material. And this is going to be of type shader material. And 
on, in our ready function, we want to simply assign the current material to this shader material. So let's just say shader material equals to material as shader material. Now, why am I casting this to shader material? Because normally material is simply an object of type material. So we want to cast it to be exactly this type. Additionally, if we want to be able to communicate with the shader controller, we are going to say shader controller. And you see that we have it auto completed here because it is auto loaded. And we want to connect the shader pulse change. So basically the signal created in the shader controller to a function. So let's just say connect shader pulse changed. We connect this signal to, I don't know, maybe on shader paused changed. And let's keep it pause just like here. Okay, let's make this function. So I'm going to say func. Let's maybe copy it so I don't write it every time. On shader pause changed. And what do we get? We get the value if it's paused or not. If you remember, in our shader controller, we sent this shader paused, which was either true or false. And we want in our bubbles white to do the same thing. So let's move on. And the next thing we want to do is simply set this value, this shader paused, to equal whatever this paused value is. Now, in order to do that, we have a simple function which is going to be from shader material. So shader material dot set shader parameter. So we are basically setting this parameter to something. So I'm going to set shader paused with the value of paused. And this is basically it. So now if I go now to main.gd, I can replace my engine.timescale with the functions that I had in the shader controller to pause or unpause the shaders. So when we pause the game, we want our shader controller to also pause the shaders. So it's going to say pause shaders. Okay. Uh, and we also want when we unpause the game to unpause the shaders as well. So let's just say shader controller dot unpause shaders. Okay. Now if I press F5, what's going to happen? Well, currently you can see that the shaders are working. Bubbles are moving. If I pause, you see that the bubbles are no longer moving at all, but the other bubbles are moving up. Now, of course, I have applied these bubbles white scripts to all the bubbles. As you can see, these bubbles, even though they are rising, they are not wiggling at all. But you can see how you could apply this script to different shaders in order to get different behavior from them. So I hope this has been helpful to you and see you in the next one.